Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to another Prayer Motivator Devotional Broadcast. This is broadcast number 507. As always, it is so good to be with you today to encourage you to pray. And today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled, A Prayer Request by Robert Hedrick. I lift up a prayer for one that has a need, giving their request to God as I plead. It shall be answered. I know he will respond, for the shed blood of Jesus has allowed us to bond. Although we've scarcely, although we scarcely met God knows them well. This one in my prayer who is so sick and frail. He knows their needs, yet it's my duty to pray, lifting up to God each request that comes my way. I can pray only because Jesus paid my sin debt. He's be- He's given me the forgiveness that I needed to get. Opening the prayer line to my Father up above, then keeping it open with His never-ending love. As I close my prayer, I do so in Jesus' name. He intercedes before God by erasing my blame. Soon I will return in prayer with another request, doing so only because I am so amazingly blessed. And ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator quote, ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Psalm fifty five seventeen, which reads Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Allow me to share with you some important points regarding this verse from Matthew Henry's commentary. He goes on to say, David perseveres in his resolution to pray frequently every day and three times a day, evening and morning and at noon, It is probable that this had been his constant practice, and he resolves to continue it now that he is in his distress. Then we may come the more boldly to the throne of grace in trouble when we do not then first begin to seek acquaintance with God. But it is what we have constantly practiced and the trouble finds the wheels of prayer going. Those that think three meals a day little enough for the body ought much more to think three solemn prayers a day little enough for the soul. And to count it a pleasure, not a task, as it is fit that in the morning we should begin the day with God and in the evening close it with him. So it is fit that in the midst of the day we should retire a while to converse with him. It was Daniel's practice to pray three times a day, and uh, noon was one of Peter's hours of prayer. 
Let not us be weary of praying often, for God is not weary of hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, my personal encouragement to you today is this. There is great power through prayer to God, and there are great benefits from God in prayer. You will find as you trail through life that you will need God in prayer and invite God to work in, through, and for your life. There is no doubt about it. So pray often. Our prayer motivated devotional today is part 38 of our series titled The Sin of Prayerlessness from Dr. John R. Rice. That great a preacher of the gospel and that prince of prayer, as I call him, uh, and the author of the best-selling book, Prayer, Asking and Receiving, goes on to say, Our prayerlessness proves our laziness. Prayer is hard work. It demands thought, concentration, and persistence. One who becomes great in prayer must overcome every kind of handicap, discouragement, and temptation. Satan would keep us from prayer by making us too busy at other matters. Satan would stop our prayer with discouragement and unbelief. He would distract our minds so real praying is work hard work. It is said of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane that being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And many a saint of God has found himself likewise covered with perspiration from the earnest work, the concentration the pleading of prayer. Now, dear friend, it is time for us to pray. Please remember the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Please join me in prayer at this time. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the mountaintop experiences. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings, but we also thank you for the valleys, the difficult times, for we learn more in those times than when we are on the mountaintop. We grow more oftentimes. So, Lord, help those of us who are in the valley to grow stronger and taller in you. Those who are on the mountaintop, Lord, uh, help them to not take it for granted and uh, to be joyful and thankful. Lord, we individually confess our sins, our failures, and our faults unto you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our many sins. Crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us and fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power of the unction and the anointing of your Holy Spirit to pray, not only now but throughout this day, to witness for you and to stand for you in these difficult days. Lead God and direct us in the way that you would have us, Lord, to go. Holy Father God, we pray also today that you would bless and guide and direct all pastors, church leaders, and missionaries around the world who stand for you and who are truly helping your people, feeding your sheep. We pray also, Lord, for over three million more people to come to know your Savior and to be discipled. We pray for the revival of your church. We pray for the healing of our families. We pray for the healing of this nation. And Lord, we pray also that you would save and give leadership and wisdom to the president and to all governmental officials who run this country, as well as all other countries. 
around the world. Now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests to our ministry here at Gospel Light Society. Lord, we pray for Helena in Liberia. Reveal to her the gift that you have given to her so that she can serve you more effectively. Lord, we pray for Gloria in California. Help her to be strong in you and have a closer walk with you. Help her to stop smoking cigarettes. Give her peace of mind and a financial breakthrough with her social security case. Bless her son, grandson, granddaughters, brothers and sisters. We pray for Lifing in Beijing, China. Uh, heal Binyun of lung cancer and he deliver his body from pain. Help him to accept the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ and that he has provided for him. Lord God in heaven, we pray for the following people who have recently trusted you uh, as Savior. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians that you want them to be. Holy Father God, we pray now for the following people who have trusted you as Savior. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians that you want them to be. We pray specifically for Jasmine in Mobile, Alabama, Maryam in Islamabad, Islamabad, Pakistan, and Mary in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved already for a while, but who have gotten away from you, who have now come back to you and dedicated their lives to you. We rejoice with them in this decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically. We pray specifically, Lord, for Betty in Bristol, Florida, Angel in Indonesia, and Jason in Woodstock. Holy Father God, we commit these dear souls into your hands, that your will be done in their lives. And Lord, use them for your glory, praise, and honor. Help all of them to find good Bible, believing churches in their area. Help us to disciple them and to give them everything they need to grow in the faith. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your first prayer needs to be what we call the sinner's prayer. Please understand with me that you are a sinner, just as I am, and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand with me that because of your sins you deserve eternal punishment in hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. That is the bad news. And it is bad news indeed. But here is the good news. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, and you want to invite him into your heart today to save your soul. Please pray with me this simple prayer and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some evil things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, 
you are now saved from hell and you're on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to gospellightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, pray, think, do. God bless you.